there's probably more stuff I get on with. I bet there is, yeah. <laughs> I bet there is. You forgot about breakfast. You, you said breakfast, but what about I lunch? About lunch. <laughs> <laughs> what about lunch and dinner? You're not eating during all of that, you know? I'm wagging my finger at you. You have to have <laughs> your dinner type of thing. Welcome to Employability Matters podcast and I have a wonderful guest. Her name is Sarah Bishop and she is the founder of Jambo Cars. We're going to talk through how we met <laughs> as well but firstly welcome Sarah. How are you doing today? Oh thank you Sophie. I'm so happy to be here and part of the podcast. Um, I'm doing really well, uh, busy as usual with the um, Valentine's Day coming up. It's been a lot of last minute orders a lot of men ordering next day delivery so yeah it's been it's been good that's what I like to hear I like to hear that you're busy because um your particular business anyway we need to I I I can go from left to right you know because I've got so many questions that I want to ask you you know because I'm so loving what you are doing because I'm a card person I love Mm. sending cards so when the connection was made I was like you are my now because I always used to go to moon pig and you know funkypigeon.com or whatever (laughs) you know, but I'm so glad I found you. I don't think you understand. You are now my home of my greeting cards without a shadow of a doubt. That means so much. Okay. It actually means greetings in Swahili. Mm. So I thought it needed to have an an African centric name. And so um, Swahili being such a beautiful language and a joyful language, I took it from, from there. Yeah. I'm wearing my, uh, Bit of merchandise. Oh, love it. Are those, is, is those sweatshirts are going to be made available soon? You know what? That's a great idea. I just have it for staff, for me and whoever's helping me out at the stalls. So, but I could make them available for sure. <laughs> Isn't it? Why not? Because especially now, everybody's wearing, you know, athwear, you know, loungewear. So we could have That's a true. jumbo cards <laughs> sweatshirt lounging and doing our video meetings, you know? Exactly. Why well, not? It's very- yeah, it's very comfortable. So yeah, yeah why not? Why not? <laughs> oh gosh, you see, yeah. I should have pinned up the hair. That's why I aimed for a hat. I just like I'm too yeah. used to nobody seeing me. So yeah. it's, now, it's like uh, oh gosh, put a hat quickly. Here, behave yourself lovely yeah so yeah you can definitely start um selling your sweatshirts online because um you know everybody's at home lounging isn't it so um when was the business founded only um last year actually during lockdown because um i'm an accountant by trade and my contract had come to an end and so i was very much involved in the whole um black lives matter movement Um, I felt the people were quite galvanized and it was like this is time it's time to do things for the community in the community and really like just make a difference and show that we can all do things I mean I mean it's sad the way it started um, that somebody had to die so publicly um, be murdered and then for everyone to come together but it has resulted in something positive I feel yes in the black community worldwide yeah yeah definitely because I was looking up online um with regards to um a lot of businesses that were started up um during lockdown number one and lockdown number two we're currently in lockdown number three and I was also a move towards positive action you know to set up this um um, podcast because it's been a long time coming and you know what Sarah I suppose that you agree with me now is the time we need to create our own lane we need to show that we're experts in our field and you know make a difference in the way that we can you know I agree I agree so much it, 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 and I think it's all especially being a bit slightly older it's all well and good for us to say young people you can do this you can do what you want we've got a lead by example yeah so if we're not putting ourselves out there and making a change 
how what do we expect for the young ones <laughs> exactly because they got to look up to us as like as an aspiration or an inspiration to say you know what yeah, Sarah yeah. can do it Sophia can do it I can too as yeah. well you know so yeah. I'm really interested to um find out about your um your career journey what other um skills and um work experience have you had in order to make this business a success my accountancy background most likely helps because it means I'm not really afraid of numbers. Yes. So I <laughs> and a lot of people are frightened of numbers. I am one. You I know, know. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I'm always going for my phone to calculate things. I need to work on my mental arithmetic, you know. Yeah. To be fair, I like numbers and I like Excel. So my mental arithmetic has gone downhill <laughs> because I put it in a spreadsheet and it'll work it out for me. So yeah, I, I live by spreadsheets. So it, I find that helps me organize and just get prepared for pop-up shops or have doing stock takes and just making sure I have things in the store. Just, it helps, a, a, um, I find with that stuff. But also um, there's a lot of free things out there. So last year I did this course called Pop-Up Business School. It's absolutely free. And it shows you ways of starting a business, spending no money or little money. Um, so I'd recommend that, that course. And then um, prior to that, I am ACCA qualified. That's an um, accounting profession. And I did that in one of my first jobs in the charity industry. I was working in the membership department. And then because I was quite good with spreadsheets and numbers, they asked me to move into finance. And whilst there, they said, oh, we'll pay for your studies. And I was like, okay, you're going to pay for it. So then I, yeah, I, I studied to be um, a chartered, certified chartered accountant there. Um, but so I worked in charity for about, I don't know, about seven years or so. And I moved from there to um, work in film and TV. And because there's a shortage of accountants in film and TV, because I think- Really? When you, yeah, when you think of film TV, you kind of think of actors, um, cameramen, all sorts, but no one really thinks about the people in the offices. That's so, so true. <laughs> yeah, so there was um, it's under yeah, not not many accountants there. So there's a guild called the Production Guild, and they're based in Pinewood Studios. And they had um, they what they did, they had a campaign to get people from real world accounting into film. And so I, <laughs> yeah, I joined as part of that scheme. And I'm yeah, I haven't looked back. It's been yeah, it's been really good. Awesome, awesome. And do you know what I like? Um, it's about opportunities, isn't it? My mum always says to me, when an opportunity presents itself, go for it, you know, because you don't know where it will lead you. Do you know what I mean? And throughout just listening to you, it's been a time of opportunities, isn't it? Opportunities right. present itself and say, yep, I'll take it, I'll go. Now look at what you're doing, it's just amazing. <laughs> I'm so happy, I don't think, I feel like doing a dance, you know? <laughs> but seriously, <laughs> Sarah, like, now what you are doing, I am so humbled that you're here. Seriously, my oh. VIP guest to you. <laughs> I'm telling you, because what you are doing is absolutely amazing. You understand what I'm saying? I don't think you, do you, do you grasp what you're doing, how it's impacting people? You know what, at first I, I just thought it needed to happen. Yeah. But when I see people's reactions to what I'm doing, that's when it starts to settle in. Yeah. People just get very happy, like representation matters, you're doing good work. I hear it in so, in so many interactions. So now I'm starting to think, okay, I need to keep going. I need to make this something big because yes. it's needed. <laughs> yes, and, yeah. and, and through what you're doing, which is good, which is, oh my gosh, it builds up self-esteem because as I was saying to you, I love sending greeting cards, you know, and I always used to go on to used to, hear, hear the words used to, <laughs> go on to moonpig and funkypigeon.com and I never used to find a card that represents who I wanted to send my card to. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. I would always end up uploading pictures of that individual type of thing, you know, because mm -hmm. I didn't like the card range. But now when I found you, <laughs> Jumbo <laughs> Cards, man, seriously. Oh, your card selection is absolutely, is excellent. Excellent, excellent, yeah. excellent. And one thing that I have noticed, it does build up self-esteem 
it does build up, as you said, representation, diversity, all of that inclusion. Why shouldn't we have greeting cards that represent us? Why shouldn't I see a greeting card that represents a picture of me on the front? Why not? Exactly. And it's interesting because I'll have um, Asian people, white people buying from me. Awesome. And they'll be like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize this. It, it really, it, the market really wasn't catered towards everybody. Yeah. And they'll support and get for people that they know, or some people even have even got for, you don't have to buy a card for a black person. If it's got like a Kente pattern, anyone can have that card. Exactly. It's like, if I'm reading a book, I'm not going to just read a book based on just because it's, I'm not going to necessarily pick a book based on just because it is a black author or white author. I pick a mm -hmm. book and I choose to read a book based on the contents and what I'm interested in. So exactly, you have customers that would buy, as you say, a Kenti cloth um, greeting card because it looks beautiful. You understand <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> and that's it, you know, and, and, and that's how we are able to, you know, reach a wider audience as well, you know, which is absolutely yeah. amazing. So um, I was going to say, could we talk about how we can buy a card from you, please? Let's start that because I love, as I said, I love greeting cards. So how do we get in contact with you and, you know, purchase your products? Yes, my, the website is um, Jambo Cards. That's um, www.jambocards.com. And you can come straight to the website. I'm also on Instagram at jambo underscore cards. So you can also find me at my cards via Instagram and Facebook at jambo cards on Facebook. <laughs> so yeah, there's three ways at the moment. Awesome, awesome. So please follow, please subscribe yeah. or whatever you need to do on the Instagram, on um, you. So I was going to say YouTube there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe so next follow, yeah maybe next I'm telling you maybe that, that's your next project you know so please follow Jumbo Cars on all of the social media platforms support 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 you know yeah. so you've been in business since you said last year September um yes I've probably been think, thinking about it from June um thinking about business in, the, in its entirety since I was probably 18, I've always wanted business, business, business in the back of my mind, though I had no skills in it. I just thought it's something that I wanted to do. Ah, oh, so you, even yeah. at the age of 18, you wanted to start your own business. Did you have an idea of what you wanted to do or? No, that was the whole problem. I, I, oh. have the idea. <laughs> I love it. But you had the inspiration, the thought yeah. was there. Mm. I wasn't surrounded by business people. Like my mom, bless her, she's a nurse and she just thinks, you know, stay fin steady. Don't be getting too <laughs> adventurous. Yes, because you have mortgage to pay, you have electric bill, you have gas bill. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Those are the things that was yeah. in my head when I was younger, you know? So it's never mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, you got to take a risk type of thing. But now it's like, mm -hmm. take a risk. You know, look what's happened. We're yeah. locked down. You know, people are working from home. So why not start a business <laughs> type of thing? Like, you know? Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. I just wanted to say, actually, even um, thank you so much for like picking up Jambo cards and the praise. But I also want to talk about some of the girls cards that I have on the store. Yeah. So it wouldn't be possible without all these all these card makers in the UK that are making these diverse cards. So there's like I've got Stacey White, Wild Cinnamon, um, Afro Touch, Leanne Creative. If you go on the website, any of the listeners, you'll see all the different um, card makers and their styles. And that's what really makes Jambo cards because there's so many different and um, so many unique styles there because um, you're like, yes, we're all black, but we're all very different. <laughs> so we've got a cater, we've got a cater for us all. That is such a key point because the key thing about in terms of business successes, there has to be some form of collaboration. You know, mm -hmm. I remember a wise saying that says one hand can't clap. You know, it's difficult to do things in silo, isn't it, at the end of the day? So, yeah, big up to all of the creatives who are making these cards. I love them. My friend loves them as well. I'm going to give a shout out to Amanda McCarthy. She's going to think, oh, oh my gosh, she said my name. Yes, because she actually posted a, um, a post in a, a friend's WhatsApp group because she was looking for Christmas greeting cards. 
Okay. And she posted your um, website and inst- no, Instagram details, I believe. And oh. that's how um, the connection was made and everything, you know. So it's really good. Like people are supporting, they're encouraging. Yeah. And well, I'm Amanda, right? huh? <laughs> Say that again. Well, I'm Amanda. Like, yeah. well, I'm Amanda, you know? yeah. well, I'm Amanda. Amanda McCarthy, big surname and everything I'm saying, you know. But it's true. You know, we need to support. Support. Make, that makes so a buy. difference support yeah. and buy as well because the buy-in the purchase makes a difference okay we can does. always follow and like that's great but we also need to buy <laughs> as you right. to buy from clinton cards and moon pig buy purchase buy you know which is important because the greeting card industry in the uk is worth about 1.6 billion pounds you know need to get a share of that no I like to think so. Yeah, I've got to keep growing. What lessons have you learned so far? Lessons that um, it's not easy. It's it's hard work. If you want something to be a success, you need to put in the time um, and dedication to it. At, in the same vein, you have to have that sort of balance between your your life and the hard work. So it might be that you know you're gonna five days of the week your head's down, but give yourself that day off to check in with family and friends and yourself. <laughs> make sure you're okay but yeah it's it's just hard uh, i think a lot of not a lot but there is this kind of um narrative that if you have your own business then you're your own boss and it's all great but i could never look down on a nine to five because a nine to five um some, some of those come half five you've got your life back the weekend you've got your life so it's not i don't think it's so simple to say you've got your own business you're you're living because you've got more cost you've got more um bosses because your customers become your boss <laughs> so it's like it's hard work is what i'd say you can get to a point hopefully where you're employing people and you can get more of your freedoms back but at the beginning just forget about it it's all about that business <laughs> It's so true. And I think that's a really yeah. good point um, because a lot of people may go into business, you know, and think that, you know, um, within a year, I'm going to make a million pounds type of thing. But <laughs> if you're in business, no, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. That's right. Sophia. And, you know, that's enjoy it along. And when I say enjoy it, you know, there's going to be times of, as you know, of ups and downs and swings and roundabout. But mm. if you're committed to it, you know, it will definitely pay off. But you have, it is a marathon. <laughs> Yeah. No, it's definitely not a, a hundred meter sprint like um as you as our wonderful Usain Bolt used to show us, you know, at the <laughs> Olympics, you know, within nine point whatever seconds, he's finished a hundred meters. It's not like that. But you know what? I love that you picked up the thing about um self-care. Mm. Self-care yeah. is important because how many hours a day would you say that you work on your business? I feel like it's almost seven to seven wow (laughs) some days not solidly but often it's seven to seven during the week and then saturday is for my family friends and sunday is usually for me so sunday's like what do i want (laughs) well that's good that you've recognized that you have to put that time aside and there's a lot of strength in that because Mm -hmm. even though you're so passionate about your business and everything you also need to um take part of that week for yourself isn't it so you're being kind to yourself as they say which is amazing so let's talk about the key skills and key qualities that you have found that is needed for your online business to be a success so far key skills Um, I think the ability to focus um that's one skill you kind of have to almost become obsessed with what you've are doing to know that you've got to spend 90 percent of your time on that thing um being able to adapt because things may not go your way um i initially wanted to have this business as a marketplace online where anyone can come and sell their cards but then i found that i would spend a lot of times looking at cards that were only were just okay i was thinking to so now i'm thinking i so when i actually made the, made the website i made it a curated site where it was what i thought were the top cards from different card makers rather than any and every card. So that was something where I had to adapt. So I, so that's, uh, yeah, you can't always think you're you're right, I guess. Ooh. Know that you have to change your mind. <laughs> that yeah. is a good, good point. Mm-hmm. Um, the other skill is the, the, I guess it's like being able to collaborate and network. 
you don't have to do it on your own there's people here that have skills that can help you where you don't have skills and there's many women in business um so you can see how you can collaborate or yeah or skill share i am biased i go straight to women there's men in business too that we can work with but... yeah, we can't forget them you know <laughs> yeah. say that we leave them out of everything you know <laughs> but that is good that is such a good point about collaboration because I'm so into collaboration because there's only so much that I know within the field obviously I can go out and you know learn that information take time to study but if there's an expert in the field like come on let's work together let's make this happen type of thing you know in terms of like your um your typical day could you Mm. give a an example of a typical day Oh, that's a good one. Okay. <laughs> this will show how unorganized I am, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tend to wake up around seven-ish. So half, by half seven, yeah, I'm up and awake. Um, so half, I usually check my emails first. Just see, so I, have, so I can see what all the orders are. And I'll package them up, ready to go to the post office at nine. I also do like a bit of a gratefulness in the morning. I get back from the post office and then I'm like, what am I grateful for? And what do I want to achieve? Um, only like 10 minutes on that. And then um, if I have, if I've done a short walk from the post office, I'll do some stretching at home, maybe put on a yoga channel and just stretch, or I'll take a long walk back from the post office. Cause I just feel like, cause we're all at home, you have to keep moving, the m- movement helps. So I'll tend to do that and then, um, about 10, probably have some breakfast and then go through my to-do list. It, it, again, I tend to try and do the ugly stuff first, the stuff that you put off and don't want to see. I like try to get that out of the way. So that might be um, it's normally the admin task of maybe filling out forms or the things that have gone wrong. What have you got to sort out? Any missing posts, <clears throat> get onto Royal Mail um, or did you just the fact, oh, and what's, what's the, are the glitches on the website? Is it running how it should? So check the functionality there, fix anything that you that you don't like the look of. Uh, then I'll probably go on to marketing. That could be email marketing prep or social media, um, or just planning or taking pictures of cards. Um, the afternoon, oh, about two, I'll check if any new orders have come in because then I'll take those to the post office. So I tend to have about two trips a day. Um, especially if there's any next day orders, they have to get out that same day. Um, what else? In the afternoon, I might review what's low in stock, what I need to order. Um, and, uh, and then I look at the finances as well in the afternoon, um, look at, do a, maybe sometimes a forecast or sometimes a budget. I won't do everything every day, but I'll look at something to do with numbers <laughs> because their numbers are normally key and they can tell you what's going on wrong and what, what you need to focus on um and oh i look at streamlining things as well in the afternoon because i I work hard but you have to also work smart yes what tools are out there to help you get your job done quicker and easier Mm. um and sometimes in the evening as well i might prep marketing then that i might be posting the next day so yeah that sort of thing there's probably more stuff I get on with. I bet there is, yeah. <laughs> I bet there is. You forgot about breakfast. You, you said breakfast, but what about I lunch? About lunch. <laughs> what about lunch and dinner? You're not eating during all of that, you know? I'm wagging my finger at you. You have to have <laughs> your dinner type of thing. But oh my gosh, Sarah, you are doing a lot during, during a, a typical mm. day, isn't it? And I was thinking, yeah. like, you talk a lot about social media marketing and posting and you know mm. IT um technical skills like how did you learn those IT skills especially with regards to um doing the posting on your social media because they are really really good very engaging so how did you learn to Thank do you. all of that um so Instagram I I'm years behind the rest of the world my personal account probably has four pictures and I had to actually, my boyfriend helped me a lot with what Instagram was. I'm like, what's a real? What's this? What? Yeah. I was so behind. So it was a learning curve. I watched a lot of videos to get how to do it. And I, people that I like, I'm like, oh, how do they do things? And um, taking pictures as well. That was a, a journey. Thankfully, a lot of the car ladies who create cards, I can use their pictures. Awesome. So, and they're creative, artistic. So their pictures are usually going to be... <laughs> they're going to be top 
but I can't, I, but, but what I actually have loved is being creative myself, getting back into that. Because when I was younger, I used to make cards um, for my family. Yeah, I like to like to throw in a bit of humour or just, just like you say, they, there weren't many things that had our pictures. So I'd, I'd get photographs, old photos, put them in cards. But that creativity disappeared and then life took over. And so now I'm slowly getting back into that. Yeah, social media, I think it demands you to be um, quite creative. That is so awesome because you have gone full circle then because you just shared that yeah, yeah. when you was younger, you like creating cards and stuff. So you've definitely come full circle. So this is your purpose right about now. <laughs> it's like been knocking on your door when you were young to say, yes, you need to open up an online business. <laughs> and there you go, 2020, you know, the... Uh, you know, the opportunities have come and now, you know, you founded your own online business. I'm so happy that I've done it. So happy. Awesome. So what would you say is your greatest achievement to date? It probably is starting Jambo Cards. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I love it. The reactions of people who um, see the cards and ones that resonate with them, you just see them look at it and smile. Like that means, it means so much. Um, and also like being able to, be fully in involved in the community and um, seeing what customers like and what they don't and what they want more of. And I mean, I love our community because the customers will tell me exactly what they want. <laughs> exactly what we That's like. so true. I want it's one like that looks community. like this. Do you have it? <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've been told I've basically got to make um, the Black Moon Pig. They're like, I want to be able to also make my own cars. I want to do this. I want to do that. Oh, but they're supporting. I don't mind if you're supporting me and telling me what improvements you'd want. That's perfect. Yeah. And that would work towards. That's so true. Um, that will enable your business to be um, an even more success, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, exactly. And I'm hoping through the business that it does become more successful, then I can employ more people like me. And then, you know, we all grow together. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I can. Oh, do you know what? It's like. The universe is, what do they say? They used to say the world is your oyster, but I say the universe is because for me, it's, 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 a lot, it's much bigger than that. Do you know what I mean? So mm. There's so mm. many different opportunities and strands that you can tap into, isn't it? You know, yeah. because when you was talking about, um, you know, like customers will come to you and say, do you know what? This is a type of card that I would like. I was reading online about um, a mixed race couple, a black woman and a white woman, a white man together and she wanted to get a greeting card that represents her situation but she couldn't find any so she bought a card and she actually used a black biro and she colored in the face that's so sad that's so just sad. to find her representation oh, wow. absolutely crazy and you know what i've done that before you know i've used i've got a card and i've used um like brown coloring pencil just to color in the face so when i saw that i thought yeah i thought i'm i, I thought i was the only person that had done that in the past <laughs> oh you're not you're not alone Goodness. not alone not alone so yeah. it's really good that you have a, a business you founded a business that represents the community and isn't it lovely getting out and meeting a community how much like, isn't it it's the best so yeah. how has COVID-19 impacted the demand for your products you know because earlier you know I was saying that um the greeting card business is worth 1.6 billion pounds mm -hmm. and especially yeah. I would say like during COVID that is definitely going to be higher when they do the next estimate. Because I remember last year, I want, before I found you, <laughs> before I found Jambo <laughs> cards, I was trying to get some cards through funkypg.com or um, Moon You've got to write me a jingle, what? Sophia. Who? You've got to write me a jingle. Oh, is it? <laughs> Can't sing, you know. The worst <laughs> Seriously. But you know what? And I was trying to get, you know, buy a greeting card and it was delayed for like two and three weeks because of the demand, you know, everybody's going oh, really? online. So what yeah. has it been for you? How has COVID-19 impacted your business? Um, well, yeah, I've been forced to make more of the online because I can't do pop-ups. They're not, um, with the lockdown, you're not allowed to. So I've had to make the online offering um, I guess putting loads of cards on there and being very responsive 
to people. So I've had to improve my tech skills as well yeah. quite quickly. Um, it's meant more having to work with the postal service and um, <laughs> dealing with that. So I'm using Royal Mail at the minute, but I'm always on the out, like looking out for other stuff because there's actually some other um, eco-friendly bike delivery services that I might start to explore. However, they only operate in certain areas of London. Okay. So yeah, it's just it just means you've got to yeah I've got to adapt and think about ways I can get cards to customers because uh, they're not going to be able to come to me. Mm. Really. Awesome, awesome. So in terms of um, as you was talking about, you've had to be more adaptable, isn't it? Become more mm-hmm. techy. Are there any downsides, any challenges to the work that you do, or the industry that you're working in now? Um, I guess spending a lot of time at the screen. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure my eyesight's got worse. I'm just always, always at the screen. There's probably possibly a downside, but um, I, I tend to think that would be the same for a lot of industries that are having to switch to online. Um, there's definitely gaps in my knowledge. So I took a free intro to programming course, and yeah, just to know stuff. What people mean when they're talking about back end and front end and the servers and the desktop and it's, it's definitely been helpful so um yeah so there's a bit of a knowledge gap but i'm working working on that no that's awesome because you know there's one thing that i think that has really come out um during this time of lockdown and self-reflection is the importance of continuous professional development. And I suppose in your field as a, a chartered accountant, you would have to undergo some form of continuous professional development, isn't it? You know? That's true. Yep. Yeah. When CPT. you identify C, C, that's it, CP, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You see? So when you identify a gap, you think, oh. Let me just plug that. What you know, learning, new learning can I um, undertake so that I'm more knowledgeable, you know? Mm-hmm. So that is really good. And I suppose that if somebody's thinking about setting up an online business, those are the things that I suppose you have to take into consideration because not everything you can buy in, is it? Because you may not have the capital yeah. in order to do that from mm-hmm. the beginning. So if it's little things that you can plug your knowledge in, then, then why not, you know? And that's, mm-hmm. that, that's definitely a good tip. So where do you see your business in like the next three years or five years, you know? <laughs> what plans do you have? Plans, well, um, but hopefully to be getting more of them that 1.6 billion market share. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Yes. Um, also making, having more, a more diverse range of cards because um, as I mentioned, Asian people and um, white people do like to, to look at the store and see what we've got going on. And sorry, and interracial couple cards as well. Awesome. Yeah, even within my family, there's a lot of black, white, black and uh, Middle East mix. So it's just making sure as many people as possible are represented um, and having more neutral cards because yes, my main customers are black, but we also, we live in a um, multicultural society. So we've got white friends and we've got to buy their cards too. So why not buy them from Jambo cards? Why so, not? <laughs> um, what else do I expect in three years? Hopefully to have a team working with me. Um, yeah. But still, still going bigger and bigger, upwards and onwards. Say. Yes, yes. Aim for the stars. So. <laughs> yeah, aim for the stars. <laughs> aim right there, and you will get there. You know, because as I said, as I'm going to keep on saying, I, I, I feel like I, I, I just love what you're doing. I don't think I'm so excited that you're here. <laughs> I just love what you're doing and you have inspired me even listening to your journey has really inspired me and I'm sure that this would be an encouraging word for somebody who wants to set up an online business so that's a question I have for you as well you know so if somebody is keen to set up a greeting card um, online business what advice would you give them I would say go for it like there's nothing holding you back definitely do it. It's your world too. So you should do whatever you want to make yourself feel happy. Um, there's, yeah, there's learning to do, but it's, it's challenging, but things that are challenging, are, I tend to be more rewarding. So hundred percent go for it. I love that advice. I so <laughs> love that advice. Would that be the same advice that you would give to your younger self then? 
like in terms of going for yeah. it what advice what career advice would you give to your younger self because if I sometimes I like to reflect and you know I think about you know when I was um 11 you know the type of feelings and personality I was as a young girl growing up you know um luckily for me my mum and dad they had lots of African art and Caribbean art in the home okay. and my mum always took me to the Commonwealth I think it was the Commonwealth Institute up Kensington like every summer so I was able to see you know flags of the Caribbean and go around the institute and learn about the Caribbean so my mum and my dad were able to instill that in me and if I was to look back and um, think about career advice I would give to myself I would most probably say um, believe in yourself a bit more because you are awesome I think that's what I would have said to myself more, you know? So what career advice would you give to your younger self? Oh, your one was so good, Sophia. I like uh -oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> that one, like, it's so true. Believe in yourself because yeah. you're, you're, you're limitless, like what you can do. Along the years, I think I would have had so many different things to say, but I, because I feel quite content now, awesome. and quite happy with how things are going, it's hard to say because I feel like things have happened on a path like they were supposed to. So um, mainly just the, the keep going, um, have time for people because um, for something to do with like networking and friends. Yeah, probably one of my regrets is friends that I've had and lost along the way. So probably about um, cultivating friendships and how, how much can you help out people around you? Do that bit more to help people around you. Even if it's like 10% more, just it matters to other people's lives. I think I'm quite about that. I, I mean, I worked in charity because I was I care about other people, but then also bring that to the people that are closest to you, not just your family, but friends as well. Yeah. One thing. I think that's really good advice in terms of, you know, throughout your life journey to ensure that you cultivate the right people around you that, yeah. you know, that can sow into your life and you can sow into their life as well um, and everything, because um, we are not supposed to be in silo. You know, as I was saying, one hand can't clap type of thing, you know, <laughs> we need yeah. each other to survive. We need each other to survive. So how do we get in contact with you again? Okay, so one I'm of on, your wonderful cards. I'm on Instagram um, at jambo underscore cards. So you can follow me there. And the website is www.jambocards.com. So please do come and look at the website. Excellent. And we're going to finish it there, Sarah. You have been a wonderful guest. You know, I am energized after our conversation and I thank you so much. Oh,